Welcome back everybody to Beyond the Patterns. Today we have another invited presentation and today I want to introduce Jinwei Sang, who is a PhD student at Cornell MRI Research Lab under the supervision of Jing Wang. The current focus of his work is to develop AI-based methods to optimize the sampling and reconstruction process of MRI and especially quantitative susceptibility mapping with multi-echo image acquisition and reconstruction. Prior to Cornell, he obtained a Bachelor of Science in Physics from Sun Yat-sen University. So it's a great pleasure to have Jinwei here. And his presentation is entitled Probabilistic Dipole Inversion for Adaptive Quantitative Susceptibility Mapping. And without further ado, I'm very happy to announce Jinwei and the stage is yours. Thank you, Professor Mayor. Thank you for the introduction. So, hi, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to show our work uh, using probabilistic approach to solve the dipole inversion inverse problem in quantitative susceptibility mapping. So, the inverse problem we are solving here is called quantitative susceptibility mapping, QSM. So, uh, QSM tries to, to solve the, the tissue susceptibility, chi from the magnetic uh, field V. And, and it's a special deconvolution process with the dipole kernel uh, lowercase d, and also with some measurement noise. And so if you look at, uh, in image space, it's a spatial deconvolution process uh, with the uh, spatial dipole, dipole kernel. And if you transform this dipole kernel in case space, you will see this, uh, this uh, zero coin surface in case space. So because of zero coin, so the, uh, if uh, when you do this uh, the division in K space, you th th that will cause some uh, ill positives uh, in the QSM dipole inversion pro uh, problem. So uh, so here this one uh, is a typical uh, local field, and this is uh, the QSM where we solve from this uh, local field. So Q QSM is a it's a developed you know, developed uh, contrast in MR that can quantify some of the biomarkers in the tissue, such as iron, calcium, and gadolinium. So we will see uh, some of the uh, some of the applications of QSM in uh, clinical diagnosis. So this is uh, the QSM universe problem we are solving here. And uh, there are some prior works in our lab that uh, solve this dipole inversion inverse problem in QSM. So the first approach is called Cosmos. So since we know that uh, there is a zero coin in case space of the dipole kernel, so we, 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 we try to eliminate such zero coin by using multiple orientation scans. Because if we only use one scan, we will have this zero coin. But if we rotate the, the main, Negative field B zero by a by a, a certain angle, uh, uh, such as for example, if we scan three times using three different uh, main negative field direction, we can uh, just uh, cancel out this zero coin. So this will make the well post uh, inverse formal in QSM well post. So this is called Cosmos. So so Cosmos has been the golden standard of QSM. Uh, for both the algorithm development and uh, clinical papers. But uh, the, the drawback of a cosmos is very obvious. It, it requires multiple orientation scan, which is not that feasible uh, for clinical application. So another approach, uh, a more feasible approach, is called MEDI. So this is a single orientation scan. So in, in single orientation, we always have this zero coin. Uh, which caused the ill post in ill postness in QSM. So in all, in order to to tackle this uh, ill postness, 
some prior reg or, or regulation term is needed. Is needed. So here uh, we use this this structure information. So this is this is called the uh, binary value of the weighting matrix uh, on the three spatial dimension. So here we uh, impose this uh, total variation regulation to to surprise the the artifact introduced by the zero cone outside the tissue brain. So this this M is the the mask also outside the tissue brain. Then we, we solve this uh, uh, this uh, optimization problem using iterative construction solver, such as conjugate grand descent, ADMM, or primal dual. So so Mandy is uh, I think is a pioneer work using the regularized uh, reconstruction to solve QSM numerous problem. And uh, and since Mandy, there are a lot of other works uh, following this uh, this prior work. Uh, either changing the regulation term or using some other advanced solver or even deep learning based solver. So this is cause of the MEDI. So the motivation of this work is that given the, the prior distribution of susceptibility and also the likelihood distribution, can we solve the, the full po uh, posterior distribution of chi given the local field D? But uh, if you look at the, the MADI, let me go back. But if you look at the, the, the MADI uh, likelihood and the prior, the, the uh, analytical form of the posterior severity given the local field B will be intractable. So this, this, is, this is the intractable problem. So we need some approximation inference method, such as Markov chain Monte Carlo version inference. But that, that traditional approximate method is very time consuming and it requires running on each case, each case. So, so now let's think about this question. Can we learn a general distribution P data uh, chi given B for any given local field B? So, so uh, building on this, we are thinking of introduce this parameterized distribution for psi, Q for psi chi given B. So we want to learn this uh, parameterized distribution such that it can approximate the general distribution p-data. So it's, it's like we are amortizing this uh, distribution across the subject instead of using the uh, traditional approximate inference method for each case. So this is uh, the motivation uh, of our work. We try to, to fit the specific distribution for a, a cohort of uh, patient's data or of cohort of subjects. So here is um, our approach. So we have, uh, remember we have two data sets. So first is a Cosmos multi-orientation scan. So Cosmos is using as the golden standard QSM. So we have a, a bunch of Cosmos data from the healthy subject because we cannot scan Cosmos on patients. That's very time consuming. So, so we have this assumption. We assume that the Cosmos data are sampled from the, the general uh, posterior susceptibility distribution given the local field D. So we, we assume this Cosmos data are samples from this distribution. And, and uh, using the samples, we can build this empirical distribution, right? Because uh, from samples, we can uh, like uh, build this empirical distribution to approximate this true distribution. And based on this empirical distribution, p hat uh, data, we can uh, use a, a metric, a divergence metric uh, in, uh, in distribution similarity comparison, uh, which is the KI divergence. So we use the KI divergence between our parameterized distribution and the empirical distribution. So after the uh, deduction, the, it, it's simply the the, max, uh, the maximal log likelihood of the parameterized distribution uh, on on the sampled point. So so this is a this is a, a negative. So this is basically the negative log likelihood of the parameter distribution on the sample point. Uh, so this is a Cosmos data set and 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 modeling. So what about the MADI? So MADI we don't know the susceptibility because MADI just uh, have has this 
single orientation scan, and we already have the acquired the local field, and we want to uh, 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 we want to solve the stability. So, so here we already have the local field, right? We don't have a stability sample, and and based on the Mandy assumption, we also have likelihood, which is a Gaussian because we we assume the noise is Gaussian, and the prior, of course, the prior we use here is is the Mandy prior, the variation prior. And again, we use the key divergence between the, the primary tri distribution, Q, Q plus psi, and the true distribution, P chi given B. And also after, after the deduction, uh, we can divide this, uh, this key divergence between two posterior distribution into two terms. So the first term is the key divergence between the, the posterior, a primary posterior and the the prior, and the second term is a is, is a expectation of the log likelihood uh, with respect to the parameterized the posterior distribution. So basically, the first term is a regression term, and the second term is called data consistency or or physical space the data fidelity term, and. Uh, we already mentioned that we want to mm, amortize this uh, process distribution process, uh, estimation process across the subject. So we, here we use this amortization, amortize the formulation. We want to minimize this k divergence across the subject. So we have M subject, we want to minimize it across the subject. So, so that, that's the normal modeling process, both in Cosmos and the MEDI data set. So here is our uh, proposed uh, network architecture. So the parameter distribution is, it is modeled as a neural network. So this network, given the input local field B, it can output, output the, the distribution of, of the posterior stability. Well, here we assume the stability distribution is diagonal multivariant Gaussian with, with the mean and uh, diag diagonal variance. We didn't consider the, the covariance or correlation, correlation between the voxels uh, to simplify our uh, process, our modeling and computation process. So here, uh, you can see here in Cosmos, is a, is a negative log likelihood estimation uh, using the Cosmos sample. And for many data sets, we, we use this scale divergence to, uh, to ad ad adapt the pre-trained pre network to any patient domain. Because many, in many, we have a bunch of many data sets on, on uh, different kinds of patients. And we, using this, we use this scale divergence to adapt the, the Cosmos pre-trained network to any patient domain. And also, um, when estimate when computing this k divergence term, there is a expectation uh, we need to estimate. So we use the Monte Carlo sampling to approximate this excitation term in k divergence. So this is our network architecture. So I want to um, have a have a comparison between the the proposed uh, PVI, which we. Uh, probabilistic diaphragm inversion architecture and the well-known variational autoencoder architecture. So you may, uh, you, may, uh, you may be familiar with the variational autoencoder architecture. So in VAE, it, it tries to reconstruct uh, the, the input data uh, uh, using the variational approach. So in VAE, they have an encoder and also a decoder. So the, so the encoder is, is used to, to map the, the input data into the latent space uh, Z. So it's a compressed uh, latent space to represent the data. And, and out of decoder is to, to recover the, the, the data from the distribution of latent space. So if you look at the, the, the loss function, which we, we call an elbow, the evidence lower bound in VE, it's basically the same uh, if you compare the, the two loss function, the VE and the proposed uh, probabilistic definite inversion loss function. So 
So the difference here is that in, in VAE, we need to, uh, to learn both the encoder and decoder, but in perverse depth inversion, we already have the decoder. So the decoder is a forward dipole model. It's from the physics. So we have a known physical model. The only thing we, we need to learn or we need to approximate is the encoder. That is to encode the input local field to the sensibility. So here, the sensibility becomes the, the, the common, the latent, latent space. So that's the, I think that's a very interesting comparison between the um, very small encoder in, in the machine learning community and our pro uh, proposed uh, uh, probabilistic Python inversion approach to solve the inverse problem uh, in QSM. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, our experiments here. So we have uh, a bunch of Cosmos data, the, the golden standard multi-orientation scan on the, on, the, on the healthy subject. So we extract this Cosmos data use, uh, into 3D patches to, to augment our training data set. So in our data set, we have four training, one validation, two tests. And each, each, uh, each subject has um, five orientations. So that's the pre-trained Cosmos data. So if we, uh, we call this um, pre-trained uh, pre network uh, uh, using only the Cosmos data, uh, uh, the, the log, where the log function is the, the negative log likelihood, we call this model PDI. So there's no uh, variational inference here, but uh, after the pre-trained uh, using Cosmos, we also want to adapt the printer network to different patient uh, patient domain. So here we 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 use this we use the variational inference to adapt the printer PDI to different uh, patient domains such as multiple sclerosis lesion and ham hemorrhagic patient. So we call this domain adaptive network PDI dash VI. So VI means Variational inference, and also we have um, an adversary attack case to show that this domain adaptation adapt adaptation is robust to this adversary attack. So first, uh, let's look at uh, the the cosmos healthy subject data set. So here we don't have any, we don't we don't we didn't do any uh, variational inference. We we simply uh, fit the network using the cosmos sample. And the loss function is a negative log likelihood. So, um, so we, we compare with MEBI, which are, we already introduced the iterative recompense solver. And the QSM net is a, is a dipole deconvolution, dipole, dipole inversion network uh, architecture uh, der derived from the 3D unit. And fine, fine is, uh, is, a, is another domain ad adaptation strategy. Uh, for deep learning based QSM. Uh, yes, the ground truth is Cosmos. So we compare uh, the, the, so here we, the, our error map in the second row, we use the Cosmos as ground truth. And you can see that uh, there are some consistency between the error map of PDI and the predictive standard deviation map. But we will verify this. Uh, correlation in later experiments. So here are some quantitative uh, metric uh, for this uh, for this healthy subject comparison. So we use the cosmos as the ground truth to compute these metrics. So fine here gives the best uh, best uh, metric because fine uh, it, as I said is a domain adapt adaptation approach that overfit the network to each individual test case. So it, it's, it's quite time consuming. So even on GPU, it requires around one minute. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a state of art for, in terms of the quantitative metric, but it's not that feasible uh, considering the computational time. And QSM net and PDI, since it's an it's a end-to-end inference, uh, network after training is very fast uh, for, for, the, uh, for the GPU time inference. 
So, so here, let's first look at uh, the comparison on the multiple scler sclerosis patient here. So here, this PDI-VI means we used the uh, uh, amortized version inference uh, on the six, six uh, MS, MS lesion patient data set. So I think there are some uh, underestimation in the lesion here uh, compared to the um, to MEDI. If you use MEDI as a reference, and after the domain adaptation, this 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 lesion is kind of recovered. And the same to the other uh, test case here. If you see this this lesion, this lesion is quite uh, hyper intense. Uh, in, in MEDI, but it's kind of underestimated in, in PVI. But after the version inference domain adaptation, the, um, the lesion is kind of recovered. So the reason why it's, um, it's underestimated is that, is that during print training, the PVI, we didn't, the network didn't encounter such patient, uh, patient lesion of uh, patient pattern. So um, the interesting is the the variance map or, or the standard deviation map for both cases looks similar. So that means this standard deviation is quite stable uh, during this domain adapt adaptation process. So this is our uh, MS lesion patient. So we also uh, test on the the hemorrhage case. So. So QSM, uh, because QSM quantified the susceptibility in the tissue, so one important susceptibility source it's in, in our tissue is, is error. So, uh, so uh, because of the reason, QSM can be used as the biomarker for the hemorrhage, uh, hemorrhage uh, quantification. Or maybe maybe not quantitative because the the hemorrhage sensitivity value is too too large, but uh, it's a biomarker for the for hemorrhage in QSM. So if uh, you look uh, so here the bright uh, clock here this is a um, is a hemorrhage in, in the brain. Um, you construct by many, and uh, if you look at uh, the PDI using a pre trained healthy subject. You, there is a very severe underestimation issue because we, the network didn't see such hemorrhagic pattern or hemorrhagic, uh, this pathology during training. This um, very uh, bad underestimation issue was uh, in was staying in PDI. But under the domain adaptation use of the inference, you can uh, see that, that this, this hemorrhage was kind of recovered. This underestimation issue was, was recovered. Also, we compare uh, the 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 standard deviation map here. The 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 um, the uncertainty inside the hemorrhage is is quite large. So that means there there's a huge noise inside the the hemorrhage that makes the the uh, the the severity of hemorrhage. Uh, Quite uncertain. So, so here is another uh, hemorrhagic patient. Uh, similarly, uh, the PEI has this underestimation issue, but after this very slow inference domain adaptation, it's, it's recovered. And also, the, it's a huge uncertainty inside the hemorrhage. Okay. So uh, we also did uh, some other experiments. So one of the is, uh, comparisons is that we want to compare the, the amortized version inference with, uh, with the subject-specific version inference. Because the reason why, why we do amortize the version inference is that we want to shorten the, 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 the approximation time. Because in the traditional approximation, Inference we need to to to, to do a compute computation per subject, and what if we mm, we don't care about time and we just uh, do the subject specific version inference per case and we compare the difference. So so here is the 
based on this paper, the uh, inference sub optimality. So they divide this the common the, the amortized virtual inference. No, so, sorry, they divide this scale divergence between the approximate distribution and the true distribution into two terms. So the first term, they call it approximation error or the approximation gap. So this Poisson uh, star, this one is, is achieved by using the subject specific version inference. That is to, to, uh, uh, to uh, learn this parameter on each individual subject. So this is called approximation error. Also, they have this amortization error. So this error is used to com compute the, the error when we do the amortization, amortize the version inference. So that's the difference between the between our uh, amorti our amortized KR divergence and this subject specific KR divergence. So this difference is, is called amortization error. So this approximation error comes from the capacity of our model. So if, if our model has infinite capacity, we can uh, predict that we can expect that this approximation error can be reduced to a very uh, very small value. And this amortization error uh, comes from the generation ability of the learned uh, variational network. So there's a uh, so this is the inference gap. So here, um, let's let's compare the the amortized version inference against uh, this subject specific version inference. So you can see that in the in the subject specific version inference, the the sensitivity value inside this uh, hemorrhage here is is better recovered in the in the subject specific version inference. Because we overfit our network, or we uh, we learn subject specific parameter for for each test case, and also uh, the the red arrow pointing to the uh, they call the shadow artifact surrounding the hemorrhage. You can see that this shadow artifact is also uh, reduced in this subject specific version inference. So the same to the other case. And on, on the right column, so this is uh, the KI divergence plot for, for these two subjects. So, so we have this um, uh, this dashed uh, dashed the right line. This is this is the amortized KI divergence, uh, and also this uh, blue uh, solid line. This is the subject specific KI divergence change along the iteration. So this care divergence is a global inference gap. <clears throat> so you can see that uh, there's almost a zero inference gap between the, the subject specific and the amortized version inference. So since uh, this seems to be inconsistent, inconsistent, right? So there is a no uh, inference gap, but we really see some improvement. So how, how can we explain that? So in order to see that, we look at each individual term in the in the KI divergence, and we compare amortized and the subject specific for each term. So so we uh, in our uh, KI divergence we have three terms. So the first term is a is a basically negative log uh, of of our covariance matrix, and second term. Is the expectation of the duration, and third term is our is the expectation of the uh, likelihood term. So you can see that uh, the second term, the the duration term, in in subject specific version inference, is kind of lower than the amortized term. So I think maybe that helps the reduction of the shadow artifact. You see that. The shadow artifact is reduced. That, that, that may help the reduction of such shadow artifact in subject specific version inference. So that that, uh, that that this is a comparison between amortized and subject specific version inference. 
So after that, we we did another experiment. So so we want to test the, the robustness of our trained model of, of this variational inference adaptation strategy uh, against the, the adversary noise. So here we we use the 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 approach proposed in this paper. So this paper uh, they proposed a adversary adversary noise. Uh, generation method. So here is their loss function. So they want to generate the adversary noise R such that to maximize the the label and the, the adversary reconstructed output. So this chi adversary is is the output after the uh, after the adversary noise and is high result adversary is the original output. So, so the goal of this adversary noise is that any tiny noise uh, in the, on the input can, uh, reduce, uh, can result in huge uh, deviation of the output. So, so if you look at the, look at the sensibility, so, uh, so this is the input B from the, um, so this is a reconstructed sensibility from the local field B without this adversary noise. And the second column, this is a, after the, this, uh, some small perturbation on the input with some adversary noise, the output stability will have a huge difference in uh, pointing uh, by this right arrow. So, uh, so this, uh, this is why they call it adversary noise. And also we apply this Subject specific virtual inference on the uh, noise perturbated input. So, based on the experiment, this uh, uh, this uh, stability is also recovered. And uh, and lastly, we we want to find a way to evaluate uh, like how accurate our uncertainty map is. Because we we, produce, we predict some uncertainty map, but we don't know either is is true or not. So here we so in order to quantify this uncertainty map, we need to to find the ground truth, right? So so based on the the forward physical model in, in QSM physics, we we can build this noisy uh, local field. Based on some uh, some ground truth stability. So first we so in this simulation experiment, first we uh, we have some ground truth stability. Then we apply the forward physical model to generate a bunch of local field, the like input noisy local field, and and then we apply this noisy local field into our network to to get the 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 both the mean, the mean and the, the standard deviation map. And after that, because we have a ground truth, we can compute to the, the arrow, right? So we compare the arrow and the, the standard deviation map because standard deviation map to some degree can predict uh, like, like the comfort, confidence interval uh, of your predicted mean map. So, so if, if the arrow map, because we we expect that a larger that, that large uh, standard deviation location can uh, have large error, so we uh, th that's why we do this comparison. And you look at the so the first row is the healthy subject, and the second row is uh, the patient data. They are they are kind of consistent consistent between each other uh, for both the 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 PDI without domain domain adaptation and PDI-VI after the variational inference domain adaptation. They are uh, kind of correlated. So that, that verify that our predicted uh, standard deviation maps can, uh, can uh, capture the can uncertainty in, in our predicted QSM mean map. So let's, let me give a quick con uh, conclusion. So in this work, we, we learn a neural network parameterized distribution 
that this that can uh, generate the posterior distribution of sensibility given the input local field. So the, the way we train these parameters is to uh, fit the empirical distribution from the causal data set, uh, aka the the uh, the the, uh, the the minus low likelihood distribution. And also we adapt the pre-trained uh, cosmos pre trained uh, uh, network to different domain using either subject specific or amortized variational inference. So there are some future work that we are considering right now. So first of all, we want to have a, a, a more ex expressive model uh, for the parameterized uh, approximate distribution. So such as invertible neural network or uh, any other network architecture can ha have more ex expressive capacity. And also we, we can also learn instead of Handily hand, hand design this prior distribu distribution uh, PK. So, uh, because in this work we use the Mandy prior, the iteration prior. But how about we learn the prior instead of printing final prior? So, this learning based prior could be uh, from some uh, density estimation network, such as autoregressive or even VAE density estimation. And also, um, another direction is that uh, we know that the subject specific version inference performs better than the amortized version inference, except the, the increased computational time. So how about we accelerate this subject specific version inference process? So because this subject specific version inference is basically a, a domain adaptation process, so we can use some strategy in, in, in machine learning to accelerate this adaptation such as using this meta learning. So this is the three directions that we are thinking of uh, for the future work. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation. I have some applause for you. I hope you can hear it. So thanks, uh, very interesting talk. And um, there's a couple of questions in the chat. So okay. uh, uh, on the performance, yeah. so you're comparing to Cosmos and, and Medi, and uh, can you can you comment on the accuracy of Cosmos versus Medi? How, how more accurate is Cosmos? Yes, uh, so actually there's a paper that compared the, the Medi and Cosmos because uh, we, because for, for the single orientation scan, uh, remember we have this uh, uh, AU post is from this dipole kernel, the zero cone here. Mm -hmm. this, 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 this one, we introduce some artifact. So one of our artifacts is called streaking artifact uh, uh, introduced by this zero cone surface. So we observe that in, in Cosmos, there is no such uh, streaking artifact but in Medi, in order to reduce such an artifact, we need to impose this uh, tolerance regulation. Yes. And, and we compare uh, Cosmos and Medi, we see that Medi is kind of, because of tolerance, it's kind of uh, blurred because yes. we have this gradient. And in Cosmos, it, it, it's quite, uh, it's recover a lot of details such as the veins and, and the tiny structures in the brain. But are these rotations feasible in an MR scanner that you rotate about X? Um, then how, how would you do that with a real patient? So for example, if if my finger direction here, and you see yeah. my, this is a, the main field. So yes. if, I, if I align, align the scanner in this way, so yes. in Cosmos, the first scan is a conventional my head to the, to the left, but the, the main direction is still in the way. So the third scan could be this one. So I rotate my brain to the right. And the fourth scan could be this one. I see. So I just lifted my head. So it and might the, be... And the, and the final scan could be this. Yeah. Okay, there's more than two so, scans. So, so there's, there's, there can be a five scans yeah, or something yeah. like that. 
Yeah, I, I, at least in, in theory, I, I believe the three scan is needed to to get rid of this I zero see. cone. I see. Because the two scan will reduce it to to the four lines, so three scan will totally eliminate. But if you want to get better image quality, you have more scan. So basically, we do five scans in our lab. Yeah, but if you want to have an, a 90 or 180 degree rotation, then you have to put in the patient head first and then, uh, you know, feet first. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. That's that you get <laughs> yeah, yeah, one, uh, a long rotation. So that's, that's not feasible for the patients. Yeah, I see. And then a MIDI is much, much more useful. Um, Say when you you display this encoder decoder architecture, are you also using skip connections or something like that, or is it a, a pure auto encoder type of structure? Uh, you you mean this one or, or this one? Uh, PDI, yes. PDI. So because this is an encoder, we 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 are able to we are allowed to have this skip. Yeah, we have this skip connection. So, so there's, we, yeah. So there's skip ahead. connections. Yes, yeah. This is a, this is also based on the unit. The un unit has this big connection. Yeah. I see. And in the variational autoencoder, there's also this uh, sampling process involved. But I guess in your case, the sampling process is essentially the empirical evidence. So you don't have to model the sampling process in the encoder decoder structure, right? Uh, so in VAE, the same thing happens uh, in the latent space, right? Yes, exactly. So, so we have this citation of the latent space and also the key divergence in latent space. So I think the same here, because we we also have the key divergence in, in sensibility. Mm -hmm. so the sensibility is our output. So we 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 do the same thing in the key divergence and also. This one, this one is this expectation is also on the on the sensibility. So we do another sampling here. So the sampling is is, is the same to the. Okay, so you have the sampling, you just, but but at what location is it? It's it's at the mu and sigma, where your large bracket is in. This is where you're sampling. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. This bracket, yeah. We sample here. Okay. Yeah, you're right. And then for yeah. the back propagation, you use the same trick as in the variational autoencoder. That you, that yeah, as the mm. reformatization trick. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Excellent. Then uh, uh, there was one question uh, regarding the cube size star, and in the objective function you had there. Is this the inference gap? Is this this is not the objective function, right? You're using the amortization as object objective function. It's just the the metric to compare. Yeah. So the the objective function is, is this one, the amortized. The, the KR divergence between the approximate distribution and the true distribution, and after that, we we have amortized the weights and also the subject specific weight and then we put these two weights so this precise the amortized the weights it's precise star is the uh subject specific weights and then we compare using this metric this is the metric yeah i'm just confused that the cube size star kl term appears twice and then uh, they, they essentially would fall out right one one with a positive one with a negative sign and yeah, then, so th this two this two terms that can cancel out, right? So basically, this inference gap equals this, this amortized KR divergence, right? Exactly. But we can we can split this amortized into two terms. So first, they they, they call this approximation gap mm -hmm. using this uh, precise star. So another is the amortization gap. So there's a difference between the amortized KL and this uh, subject specific KL. So this is um, this is just uh, to describe how how this how to how to see this inference gap. 
Yeah, but it it wouldn't make a big difference in terms of a loss function because uh, the the psi would be uh, would be fixed, right? Or the psi star in this case would be fixed, so it wouldn't change in the optimization. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. it wouldn't change. Okay. Um, yeah. So very interesting talk. Um, yeah. And also very, very nice results. In particular, I like that you did these adversarial attacks. So this is a very good method to check whether uh, this really makes the robot, the method more robust. That's a really cool approach. I, I really like that. So this is, this is yeah. very nice. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for the appreciation. <laughs> So thank you very much for the presentation. I have another round of applause for you. So thank you very much. Yeah, you've seen that there was quite a bit of discussion. And if you have additional questions, then please ask them. You can ask them here in the comments or you can also send them by email. So we would be very glad to answer them. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation as much as I did. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again in the next episode of Beyond the Patterns. <laughs>